This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. Joining us, Susan Constantine, trial consultant and body language expert. We're talking about BTK. Bind, torture, kill. What that stands for, BTK, of course, the infamous murderer that haunted the city of Wichita, Kansas for decades. He is behind bars, admitting to many of his crimes several years ago, but he's back in the news. Several cold cases being resurrected. Dennis Rader's old property in Park City, Kansas. It's been an abandoned lot for many years. Now they're digging it up and they have found some evidence. What's your take on this? Dennis been pretty quiet in, in prison, at least talking not talking about his crimes, commenting on many others over the last couple of years. Are you surprised by this? No, kind of reminds me of the Vallow case, right? Yeah. So now there's something that is, there's obviously something that the detectives know about or have some insight into, which is leading them to that, to mm-hmm. digging up his yard. I mean, you know, I, th- this whole phenomenon with these trending, you know, serial killers, you know, it, to me, it's like, it is becoming all way to information is becoming all way to available of what these guys are doing. You know, I don't think that this be take B, BTK. Uh, BK, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. BK killer. Obviously it's not his first time around and everything that I have been taught about serial killers is, and they can go dormant for a little while. And then that hunger, that thirst, that desire to to reoffend and to rekill again never goes away. It's that's not rehabilitatable. It's just not. These guys are just possessed with the evil of the evilest. So I think that they have a hunch that there's more bodies there. And how wonderful if there were, because if there were, maybe we get some more unsolved cases. Yeah. You know. You know, we find out where some of our own loved ones, their loved ones are. I have several cases, guys. I mean, Tony, I mean, with being in the media and of course, like podcasts like your own brings mm-hmm. awareness and from awareness gets desperate families that are reaching out for some answer, someone to help them a, a different angle, a, you know, analyzing different possible suspects or people they may not have ever considered before. Why? Because they have loved ones that have been, the cases have gone cold. Yeah. And, and eventually what happens is they say, oh yeah, you know, the detectives or the state agencies have just literally stopped. They've just stopped looking, yeah. just waiting for something to pop up, something organically. And then they start sniffing around like dogs. And I think that's what's happening here. Yeah. Somebody pulled in a hunch. Somebody's got a clue that led them back there again. And to find what they're finding underneath where he once had a shed. I know his daughter, Carrie, went in and talked to him this summer after not speaking with him for many years, attempting to try and get some information. She says that not a whole lot came about those conversations directly with him. He continues to deny uh, any involvement in these. But he seems to be one who's been proud of his crimes in the past. I mean, he there really was no BTK trial initially. He flat out admitted to all of it very curtly in court uh, many years back before he was put away for the rest of his life. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I should be surprised or not that he's not standing up and saying, yes, I did this, if in fact he is behind it. He is the prime suspect now, uh, and we'll be very interesting to see uh, what kind of connections are made with DNA, if they're able to do that with any of the evidence that has been found or how else they can place him at the scene of these crimes way back in the 1970s. Yeah, to me, I would think that if I was to put my mind into his thinking, I think that this is an adrenaline rush for him. Yeah. I think that he is loving the mystery of it. and he's, he's just watching it unfold to see what they could figure out. Why confess when the fun part of it is that for him, the thrill <laughs> is for them to try to figure it out to see if they've got it right. You know, I mean, these guys have got their like their signatures, their stamp on their their craftsmanship mm-hmm. speak terribly to say that. But it's you know, that's really the reality of it. Right. So I would think that he's probably the reason why he's not coming forward, even though he's a prime, number one prime suspect. Why would he? It's too much fun. 
you know, the game over, then the game's over. There's no much, there's no more fun left in it. There's no thrill. It makes me wonder if he's been waiting all these years for people to, to finally come about to discover some of these, knowing that at some point he'll get to be back in the spotlight. He's obviously someone who has loved the media, has played with the media from the beginning. He's one of the originals, the OGs of it, if you will, when it comes to trying to get attention out there through media. So this has to be, he's got to be like salivating at this. And I'm just curious as to how far he will take this. If in fact, let's say he is the man behind one of these new cold cases that have been resurrected. Is this something where he will ever want to admit or does he want to go for the full ride this time? Meaning a court case, meaning an actual trial, which could conceivably actually happen here. Yeah. So he's in the limelight. He's a celebrity yeah. you know, in the serial killer world. What we're what we can't do is expect any sort of empathy or compassion because he is a serial killer. He is he the depravity that he has in him. He has no soul. So when why would he give it up? I mean, I get it that if he were five minutes before he used to be injected or electrocuted, I'm just saying that if he's getting the death penalty, then maybe. Why would he? I mean, this is his like desire. I mean, it's hard to I can't wrap my head around it because you know, you and I were yeah. this is like mind-boggling to us. But the fact that he hasn't done it is because he doesn't want to. There's still more for him that he's getting out of it. And just think about it. if he's in prison and, uh, you know, he's known as the BT- BK killer, you know, I, can you imagine all the other inmates going, yeah, man, this is, the, this is, you know, the BK killer. He's in here and I'm next to his yeah. room or whatever. I mean, he's probably loving all the attention. And then he go, it goes to court, goes to trial, and, and then he gets to become his own detective and you know, in a way, his own attorney and his own and his own trial and witnesses. Yeah. And he's all like thinking and he starts trying to figure out, like, can you really figure me out? Because I'm so smart. Nobody can figure this out. I want to see if they can do it. Well, his big thing has always been riddles and trying to play games with the detectives and media and try to decipher his codes. I know Kathleen Ramsland, when she did his did the interviews with him over the several years when she wrote the book about him, that half of that communication was done in code between BTK and uh, herself, even she, when I actually spoke with Catherine about two or three weeks ago prior to these new developments, and there was a little buzz, there always has been a little bit of buzz here and there about possibly his connection to some other crimes, but at that moment, even she didn't think he had a whole lot more up his sleeve, but seeing as to what they found, I think there, there really might be. This is, I think, one of the biggest new developments in this case since he was actually put away almost 15 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, keep in mind, too, what are we doing right now? This is a true crime show. Talking about him. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Everything's true crime. I'm writing a true crime book. I teach about true crime. So there is a whole community out here that are so interested trying to understand and get into the mind of these uh, these killers Mm -hmm. and trying to figure it out. You know, we're trying to figure it out. He's trying to figure out or he's getting the thrill out of us trying to figure it out. I mean, it's a, you know, sometimes I wonder about ourselves. I know. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with us? You know, <laughs> I, I, I know as, as much as we can learn from this and I feel like we're, we do good, but it, it raises awareness. I think we, it, the whole community in its entirety is good, but at the same point, you end up, I think, stoking the egos of some of these people in the process of trying to bring justice to their crimes. Yes. Precisely. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.